Hi guys, it's another beautiful day that I'm committed to give you the best stories. Not only the best stories, but beautiful stories. So today I have met a lady who has beaten all the odds in our community to be where she is right now. Not only where she is right now, but she has already done a lot of things and amazing things to our community. So guys, we are going to talk to her. We are going to know her better about her music journey, about her life, and also entrepreneurship. So guys, let's do this. Remember, this is Personal Diary with Bella Itemere, and let's do this. Someone you meet, wherever you meet them, doesn't mean that's their destination. It could just be a milestone. Yeah. So this, for me, is a milestone. Mm -hmm. And then I asked him, okay, fine, so you have asked, I've answered, so why did you ask? Mm -hmm. And then he told me, I've always been straight like that. He told me, I'm asking because I want to help. Mm -hmm. I asked him, so how are you going to help? Because I'm, I'm not in the business of sleeping with anyone. <laughs> so how, how are you intending to, to help me? And he told me, so here's the thing. Every day, I'll make sure I come here to take my double black mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. And every day I come, I'll leave you a tip of a thousand shillings. And when I leave you that tip of a thousand shillings, I'm going to need you to buy a home bank because probably you don't have a bank bank. So you put that money there. After a few weeks, I know you'll have full school fees for your second semester mm -hmm. since you've already started school. So since you're already looking into it, and maybe by the time you're rolling, you mm -hmm. won't have the food for the first one. Mm -hmm. So my efforts of saving from his that home bank mm -hmm. to now working at Islam's Hotel where now I'm saving my own 5K mm -hmm. my, helped me to manage to get just the entry fee to, to campus now. Mm -hmm. And then I did my... I did uh, procurement, and then after that, well, well, I did procurement, so I left the work at the housekeeping place. Mm -hmm. When I left it, I went to work for Levi. So Levi is uh, one of the biggest clothing brands in Kenya, mm -hmm. and their sister company is Manix. I worked there for, I think, a few months. And while working there, I was still in campus. Mm -hmm. And so I quit. you were working part-time? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It meant that... I would go either to class by 6 a.m. I'm there, mm -hmm. or I would go for the evening class after work, which was impossible because evening starts at 5.30. Mm -hmm. I leave work at 8. Doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. I had to go for the morning class, mm -hmm. then go to Levi, mm -hmm. work until 8 p.m. By the time mm -hmm. I get home, it's 10. Mm -hmm. I spent three hours. I spent three hours revising whatever I missed, mm -hmm. and then I would probably sleep for like three or four hours. Mm -hmm. So that, that was my trend all throughout, sleeping for four or five hours. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to Levi, I, I, I learned so much from Levi. I guess that's why I we will come to a point where now I own my own clothing store. Mm -hmm. I learned how to talk to people. I learned patience. I learned relationships. I learned um, standards and how people, different people have different standards. I learned how to really just care for people mm -hmm. because the people we were meeting there were high-end people and there's no way you would take your moods there. Okay. Yeah, and then also I learned different kinds of fabrics and all that. Mm -hmm. So, but working there was stressful because there was no time for school or anything. So I quit. Mm -hmm. And guess where I went? I went back to being a waitress. You but now on part time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now on part time. Now I work only over the weekends. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I used to make 10,000 shillings a day. <laughs> yeah. 10,000 a day? A day. That is cheap. That is steep. It's just a lot. <laughs> you know, you know, it's just a lot. Okay. <laughs> so I used to make 10k on Friday and then 10k on Saturday. Now what that me meant was that the whole week I can go to class. Mm -hmm, yeah. So no, no, I have time. No, I've yeah. I understood how the world works. Mm -hmm. So I knew, you know, two days, I have money for school fees and I can go to, to school. school. So that's what I was doing. Yeah, but then in the process, one day a lady walked into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I know that those days I was beautiful. Special mention to Nicknack Interiors for giving us this chance for sponsoring this video and all that. Nicknack Interiors is around with the Gary Road. If you want anything for your interiors and all that, clearly you can check them up on Instagram, Facebook and all that and all social platforms. So let's continue with the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah guys, so um so I, I, the reason why I'm going to details now is because as usual, you guys know me for wanting to encourage you. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to feel like I am here because I am here because I just woke up and I was here. Mm -hmm. There's a story. Mm -hmm. So when I say do this, do that, it's because there are things I've done. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to that restaurant. People didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I went to 
the back where not the waiters would lean on a certain table or just like a place where you would chill as you wait for your people to finish eating so that you clear the table. Mm-hmm. I stood there and then I told God, like I was saying, I need a job that I will be working from eight to five. I don't know where it's coming from because I, do, I have not finished my academics mm-hmm. and no one probably would give me a, that kind of job, mm-hmm. but I need it. Immediately I made that prayer. One of my friends sent me a post, a, a job uh, a job vacancy post, mm-hmm. and I read it, it was saying the Ministry of Interior is looking for people to work for them. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for, what was the number? It, either 20,000 people or 4,000, I'm not sure, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, my faith, I applied. I told God this is the job. Mm-hmm. Now, mark you, government jobs are not easy to obtain. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you guys, I applied for the job, let's say in January. And by the time I was doing the interview, it was three months after that. Mm-hmm. And by the time we were getting the job, it was three months after that. So from from applying to getting the job was six months. Six months. That was patience. That's a wait. <laughs> yeah. That's patience. Mm-hmm. And it's not just a patient. It's not just patience. It was a stormy one. Mm-hmm. Because every morning I would wake up to the person who I... You know, okay, let's let's say this. I applied, and then now we were to be scheduled for an interview. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, being scheduled for an interview was also not easy because some people are being you come not to lay up your list because of very small things. Oh, you wrote this one the wrong way. You didn't use caps. You didn't do this. Me, mm-hmm. hey, I did all those mistakes. Mm-hmm. But what I did was every night when I got home, I would sit on my bed and I'd tell God, "Don't forget me." When I was a child, you told me. That's a story for another day. You mm-hmm. told me you never forget me. Mm-hmm. So don't forget me now. You promised. You promised to be there when mother passed. Mm-hmm. So keep your promise. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to God every night I remember on my bed. Actually on my mother's bed. Mm-hmm. And then I got the call for the interview. I went for the interview. After the interview, the guy who was uh, shortlisting people after the interview. Actually, the interview was so funny. Yes. <laughs> because... <laughs> Interviews are government no lose mambo ya serikali, mambo ya trending matters. Say you are internet, you don't know what's going on, you don't watch news. Yeah. So you are seated in a room, unangoza kuitwa. Let me tell you, that time, people were seated there to unangoza interview. Mm-hmm. So people were revising. Oh, so who's the minister of what? I mean, I'm a cashier girl. So if you mention, I put it in my head. Mention, I put it in my head. So I'm like, hey. So mm-hmm. this is how these interviews are done. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm going to fail. Because I don't know anything. So I go to the interview room. I'm telling you this because you, I need you to understand God's favor, how it works. Yeah, exactly. I sit in that room. I'm telling you, I found many people in that boardroom. Men and women. Ah, me, I was done for. <laughs> me, I went in there. Because in fact, however, I was dressed was not the way government people are supposed to be dressed, apparently. Mm-hmm. Me, I was dressed in a very modern way. Mm-hmm. So I sat there. So, Wekali, I see you from Macha. I'm like, yeah, I'm from Makweni. And you? So now I start talking to them, my like friends. <laughs> and then I tell that lady over there, hey, you have nice hair. Yeah. So, because I know I know nothing. Yeah. So the least I could do is be human with them. Yeah, exactly. So I started talking. Then he told me, do you know the chief on your place? And I'm like, yeah, I've met him. The good thing is I've met him because of some land issue. Mm-hmm. Okay, what does he do? So I remember my issue was a land issue. I told him about the land survey issue. Mm-hmm. said, okay, that's good. That's one. Number two, conflict. Number three, until he asked me about the CS. I don't know what. I was like, honestly, me at a situation, man. Mm-hmm. But me na join kika pa isere, me kika pa ikazi ata two two months in chadu awa to what? I'm like, oh my god, it was how we are we supposed to help you? Me mm-hmm. kambiya, I need a job, and I've answered most of these questions. It's just one question that I I, I was not sure of. Mm-hmm. Where do you know your chief? What's his name? He didn't know his chief. Mm-hmm. So they started laughing <laughs> in the boardroom. <laughs> they started laughing, and then before we knew it. A third of the time was spent interviewing me, and then the other two thirds was spent on us bonding. Mm-hmm. So when I left, um, my name was actually on the list of people who had passed. But then there are people, superior people, who had their people who were not supposed to be interviewed, but were supposed to be hired. Mm-hmm. So people's names were being removed. So this guy from the interview place calls me because I'd, I'd taken his number. Mm-hmm. He tells me one people's names are being removed. And I know you don't even have money to bribe us. Mm-hmm. So how do we help him come? Yeah, wait, wait. Make sure my name is there. When I get a job, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you. Mm-hmm. Any, anyway, I never paid him, honestly. Him, he just decided to make sure if any other names are being removed, mine stays. Mm-hmm. Right? So, and then, anyway, long story short, I get the job. But now you have to go get your paper. Mm-hmm. So I went there. And then I met this lady, one of the interviewers. And then... She told me, Yvonne, you know, you're so beautiful. I told her, yeah, you too. You know, you dress very, very differently from the way other people are dressing in the government. Mm-hmm. She's those women who likes being told that. Mm-hmm. 
I said, okay, but she truly she was looking very nice. Mm -hmm. So she told me, okay, you're a very nice girl. And even when you left the interview, these guys were like, but she doesn't know so much. But I told them, can you see the grade she got in school and the grade we have been working with? So this one already tells you she's smart. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of letting her know what you want her to know. Plus, I like her personality. This one is going to work well for the ministry. Oh, nice. So she's the one who said that. She was telling me that story now mm -hmm. after. So I get the job at the Ministry of Interior. I worked there for two years. Mm -hmm. And then for two years, now I've graduated. Now I graduate well, well in the ministry. Mm -hmm. After graduating, I tell myself, if you no, you still haven't gotten where you need to get. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to, to move again. Mm -hmm. So I go, I sit down, I tell my sister, it's God has said it's time. Mm -hmm. And for me, when it's time, I get so uncomfortable. When it's time for change, I get very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I go to uh, my sister, I tell her, so tonight I'm sleeping at three. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, to apply for five jobs in procurement. But I had specifications. I told God, you know how much I love glass. I love glass. Come on, I room with glass. Mm -hmm. I am in love with glass. And I told God, I need to work in a place with glass where when I'm taking a mind break, I can look at the cars outside or in birds outside and then get back to me. It didn't seem normal, the prayer, but that's the prayer I made. Mm -hmm. I told God I also am praying to work for an NGO mm -hmm. because I can't move from the government and just move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I just need an NGO. So I applied for five jobs. Imagine two days after I receive a call, uh, an in, uh, call for an interview. Mm -hmm. And I don't have an experience in procurement. So what do I do? I go home. And they, and they research for four hours on how interviews actually take place, procurement interviews take place. And they revise all those questions. And I even go back to my books and read all the summary in four hours. Then I go for the interview. Mm -hmm. When I went for the interview, my, I also found many people and they all loved me. Mm -hmm. And after that, now I got the job. So I worked as a, let me take you through that. So I worked as a procurement assistant mm -hmm. and a receptionist in that company. And then I was promoted to an accountant because while there, I decided to do my CPAs. Mm -hmm. So while doing my CPAs, they promoted me because they realized I have some serious sense of work. I have some serious OCD, so I made sure things were neat. Mm -hmm. And then also, I was so driven, and I used to make work. Like, I used to make things work. Mm -hmm. So they moved me to the accounting department. So I worked there for some time. Mm -hmm. After that, I got very uncomfortable again. Mm -hmm. So I decided to quit without knowing where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I quit the job and I land myself in an insurance brokerage company. I work as an accountant there for two months. So now there they fire me. Mm -hmm. But they fired me for the wrong reasons. They really, really fired me for the wrong reasons. And I won't state it here because they don't want to with anyone. Mm -hmm. But men, you know what you do to women in employment, which I'll not be very specific. Mm -hmm. So people like us who say no to things, we get um, the high road. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So after getting fired, um, the same company had two sides. So it had the insurance company and then the other brother, it's an Indian one, had a marketing company. So this people in the marketing area call me and they're like, what would you like to model for us? I tell them, no, I'm no model. And then they say, okay, what do you do? Can be I'm a vocalist, that much I know I can do. They're like, okay, so we have this project we're doing with the, the Mao Forest and we'd like you to be part of the, the, the project. So I do a song. But that day I was heartbroken also. So me singing to the plants, I was also singing to the man. Mm -hmm. So I sang. <laughs> when gave me that song, mm -hmm. and then I sent it. You know, we like to record because you just sad. You don't mm -hmm. even feel like it will go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Guys, I recorded that song. I sent it. I received calls. I was sleeping the next morning. I received calls, so many calls from that company. And they were like, so you are an accountant, and this is the voice you're carrying. Are you even serious? Why were you even here? Mm -hmm. And then apparently those people who were for the project, when they heard that song, they started crying. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how someone can cry for one song, but they cried. Mm -hmm. And then I went because I needed not to meet them. They needed to meet me in person to see who is behind the voice. Mm -hmm. When I went there, see God, see God. When I went there, <laughs> I heard that those people, because they knew what happened, they made my former boss listen to that song and they asked him, what do you think of this song for this project? And he was like, oh my God, this is the best I've had. Uh, from these two projects, this voice is above and beyond. Mm -hmm. So all this while when you were working and struggling, yeah. Yeah. how was life uh, after your mother's death? I love you, Tomorrow you've not mentioned your father anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's coming way after. But um, life was hard. Life was extremely hard because 
and then we moved to another house with my sister, very far, almost close to a railway place. And that time, we were in Zunguka. I forgot to mention that one. We were in Zunguka and we were interviews. There's this interviewing jobs. I was doing stopping people on the road and asking them survey questions. Mm -hmm. It was hard. And uh, I'd get home sometimes without money. It was too much. That's when I got answers. Because there's one day I was in my room and I overheard a conversation between her and her friends. Mm -hmm. And that broke me. And since that they just kept getting me sad and sad and depressed and depressed and depressed and then I got answers. And I was taken to an emergency room due to it. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And there was no mom or dad to come see me. Mm -hmm. My sister was in, in high school in Bodhi. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I recovered and decided to leave just with my sister. Something I forgot to also mention was when my mom was dying. That's a story for another day. But when she was dying, she told me, I'm going to die. I don't like, what I need you guys to do is always remember it's just the two of you against the world. There's no one else. Did you ever see anyone coming to this house? No. So always remember it's you and your sister and your nyanya, my grandmother. So no one should ever come and tell you these things are mine, this ones are mine. No, you have all the receipts in the drawer. So I knew where she kept the receipts. And she told me, Sakama, I'm teaching you by my body. And then in Kairoko, Boram Kupamota. Always remember that. And I, I took those words and I said, Why was I living with anyone? So we moved to that Karelwe place. I met a lady. Her and her mom conned us all our household items to live back in a, it was so weird, to live back in a fridge in a microwave. Like mm -hmm. My mom had invested in her house. Mm -hmm. But these people conned us in a certain way. That's a story for yet another day again. It's a, so me and my sister used to sit in the living room and yeah, I think to now on the TV. We had the TV. You had to leave. Here I promised myself I'll never sell because my mom used to have it. But everything else they kind of took from us. Mm -hmm. And then now we decided to look for another house. And we found a house where God had prepared a mother for us. This lady was a landlady. I told her I need a house, but I don't have deposit rent or anything. And she talked to one of my friends who was willing to lend us the money. And she told us you can enter. So I told her to to and I told God, you see, the, I love empty spaces. I was talking to a friend of mine recently and I was telling him, mm -hmm. don't worry, we have an empty space and you're starting again. Mm -hmm. And that's motivation. Mm -hmm. Because when you have an empty space, it gives you the zeal to want to fill it up. Mm -hmm. So I told my sister, you see the space? Now we can finally buy the seats we want. We can finally get the table we want, mm -hmm. the bed we want. Exactly. You know, we can, I love interior, so I was like, we can finally do this. And I think my sister used to look at me and say, like, Chana, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. And imagine I did that. I would get chair, you see, set a five city and go 15k. Mm -hmm. So I'd pay my carpenter 5k, 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 and then it better to tip. Because sometimes the clients would put tip under the pillow. Yeah. So as it was, me, I, me I'm, a good, I'm a big saver. <laughs> so I put the money together, I sent the carpenter, mm -hmm. and then we bought everything. And then my landlord, one day had a, had an issue with my sister mm -hmm. and asked my sister and, and, and he she she yelled at my sister. Mm -hmm. I was so mad because for me if you touch my sister, you touch me. She's my child. Yeah. I me I'm, I'm her mother. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to cross me, that's what you touch. Mm -hmm. So she touched my sister. I went to her house, I didn't find her. I, I had her number. I sent her paragraphs. You know those days of paragraphs? Mm -hmm. I, sent her, I was so immature. I sent her a paragraph. Mm -hmm. I told her the things you're doing to us, someone will put your children. How can even dare talk to an orphan like that? Mm -hmm. She came to my house and she was crying. And she told me, I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you guys are an orphan. You guys live like you have parents. Mm -hmm. In my mind, your parents are in abroad. Mm -hmm. So there's no time I thought you guys were an orphan. I mean, I passed by your house and I'm collecting garbage money and your house is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's among the beautiful homes I've seen. But at that time, I'm like, oh, 21. And I told her, no, we don't have parents. I moved here by myself, me and my sister only. Some days we don't have food. Some days we are crying here, no one knows. Mm -hmm. And some days we are happy. And when we are sad, me and my sister will take a walk. Because we are happy. We are mama. We are happy. Yes, we are happy. By that time, relatives think like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Mm -hmm. they are nowhere. You know, it's just the two of us. But there is something that I have learned in life mm -hmm. is uh, that um, Treating an, a, an orphan negatively yeah. is so bad. Because yeah. this person has no one to talk to. Exactly. This person has no one to yeah. turn to at the end of yeah. the day. 
Ni yeye against the world. Yeah. Maybe the relatives were 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 wageuka. Exactly. Other orphans were chased away from their homes. Exactly. That's so bad. Yeah. And these orphans always go through a lot. Okay. Kila siku unaweza pata orphan ako depressed. Yeah. Ask because me. of the things they go through. Ask me. Man. Ask me. Ask me. Yeah, the cheating and orphan is so bad. Uh-huh. Yes. But mm-hmm. let me clarify that she was not bullying my sister. Mm-hmm. She was feeling like Apparently people were destroying her pipes so much mm-hmm. and then eh kufika hiyo sikapata my sister nimeshikilia mm-hmm. so she assumed she's the one who has done this now now the neighbors kids used to spoil the pipe mm-hmm. so she was just mad mm-hmm. but it had it was not personal mm-hmm. but me I took it personally because it's my sister mm-hmm. now when i talked to her she realized we are often do you know since that day mm-hmm. for four years she became our mom mm-hmm. for four years she had a farm because she, she knew i loved milk alipa and let her five liter maziwa oh, wow. every two days mm-hmm. Alafu akileta vitu like um ametoka kuvuna anatugalia everything half. Mm-hmm. So for some reason we never really liked tea, you know all those things. Sometimes she tell us kujeni mkule dinner kwangu. She didn't know that time we didn't have dinner. Mm-hmm. So we go and then when I have breakups and all that then she took up the place of her mother fully. Mm-hmm. From us arguing to her being my mom. Mm-hmm. And then her children became like her siblings. So even now like we are Christmas we would spend with them you know they they like really for me now exactly and people mm-hmm. never understood from your kid you know it is kikuyu road so people never understood mono mama and apenda watu kiasi hii mm-hmm. this is when a coach told us not to pay for bills and i said no because for me i don't like things like i owe you yeah. so i paid rent and then maybe takataka maji i used to pay mm-hmm. so she was there for us on my graduation her and her husband were the ones who showed up too oh, wow that's so beautiful and after they took me for lunch little did they know they were taking time out there to do a party in the house mm-hmm. so when we went home i found a whole party for me oh, wow. i remember the night before i was praying to god asking god so so when you want to balisha ngweza tukashimwa na balisha na nani because i don't have a mom so mimi nenda tukuitwa ivone na mama nachukua my shirt and then that's it but kumbe they were coming Do you know they woke up i think around 3 am mm-hmm. they took me with their prado to the graduation mm-hmm. they were dressed up and mm-hmm. they were dressed up the picture is someone give them to share mm-hmm. they were dressed up to the teeth and they, they they really they bought chocolate cakes for me you know those small things mm-hmm. people do for me they don't understand the impact it had mm-hmm. they bought chocolate cake and that's what i loved the most about the day because i love cake mm-hmm. so it was it was good to see someone actually register that mm-hmm. And then now it was time to move and then now that's when you know life was hard without a mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, from men bullying you to people bullying you because they knew you have no one mm-hmm. from someone you called a best friend telling you how you become thin and now all you have is bones where exactly. did the calves go to me mm-hmm. mama that chick asking me mm-hmm. hey in high school you have used to have hips when you now zilenda but that time you're so skinny you're not even thinking of hips you're thinking of how this girl is going to eat exactly. you know it was so inconsiderate right mm-hmm. And um anyway it was it was difficult uh fast forward worked for the insurance company got the deal and then during that season mm-hmm. I met my dad mm-hmm. no actually I met my dad when I was working in the government office because mm-hmm. a friend of my mom and my dad came it's another soap opera came told me hey Yvonne squeeze you on her hips come on tia ko shiko I'm like I'm come by your who is shiko shiko is like your name mm-hmm. she's like I see your dad's sister like my dad so you know my dad i've been looking for my dad since 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 mm-hmm. and you you've been here coming to our house all the time and you never told me you know my dad mm-hmm. like but i thought you knew how would i have known mm-hmm. and then she told me well, that guy used to pick you when you're in school, school kitambo over the weekend when he was in coming back my mom told me it's just a suitor like yeah that's your dad mm-hmm. so i we, we coordinated i met him only to find out that i thought we didn't have family but my dad's side is big mm-hmm. like the family is huge mm-hmm. the sisters are many the cousins are many any it's a whole vibe by itself mm-hmm. and finally i also got any every time go to speak in here mm-hmm. and he pick up with the mentor and sit up in front of papi i can pick up with the with the landlady i can pick up mama i can pick up sasa na boss wangu sasa my my dad side mm-hmm. and i met the sisters who i look like kabisa if we were to sit down with them here mm-hmm. you literally say yeah those are your people yeah <laughs> they are very well endowed <laughs> so i met them and we my dad loves me so much by the way mm-hmm. she just felt like my mom didn't love him enough to allow him to be in my life mm-hmm. which could be true also mm-hmm. um 
Yeah, so the family is there now. When I have issues nowadays, I call my aunts. Because mm-hmm. they're my mothers now. Yeah. Even now at my age, I call them. I tell them, Auntie, like today I was supposed to go see one. Mm-hmm. Auntie, I have an issue. He has broken my heart. Mm-hmm. Or I've broken his heart. Or the business is not doing well. <laughs> uh-huh. And we go. Up to them. Yes, and we go and then they ask me, okay, so who's coming with wine? Are they the ones buying the wine this time? Or am I going with wine? Mm-hmm. So we sit and have wine and... I would whine about my issues. Mm-hmm. And we would talk the whole night. Me and my auntie would talk until 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. And that's how God takes care of orphans. He yeah. put people in every stage of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's how it was mm-hmm. with uh, that. As we finish up, let's talk about your music career briefly. How yeah. did you start singing? Was um, it just uh, from, the, from the company you're working with mm-hmm. and then you realized you had vocals? No, for, for the music. I started uh, singing when I was in primary school and all throughout uh, school I would lead mm-hmm. in the choir for the assembly days mm-hmm. um, and then after that when I was working for the government is when a friend came and told me he to record something. Mm-hmm. He took me to the studio, I recorded my first song which is my mom's song. Mm-hmm. My encouragement always has been in the middle of all the storms you're going through, mm-hmm. do a few things which I like to tell people. Number one, ask yourself two weeks from now, whatever you're worried about, will it, will it matter? If it won't matter, then why are you wasting that energy now? Mm-hmm. Number two, in the middle of storm, don't forget to keep your joy. It's the only thing you can keep because it's inside you. Mm-hmm. Everything else will fall, mm-hmm. but that one has to stay. Mm-hmm. The third thing you can do if you're now a mature person, if you're not a baby, mm-hmm. keep a journal so that any day you're having a bad day, Go back to that same day, a month or two ago, go read what you wrote. Mm-hmm. High chances are you wrote something good was happening. Mm-hmm. That should tell you a month from now, something good is also going to happen. Exactly. I faced many challenges. I got hit by a car in 2015. 2013, lost my, my mom. 2015, got hit by a car, got fired in the process, but driven for eight months. No, no job, no source of income. But I, one thing I kept all throughout that was my faith. I never lacked faith. Even right now, if you take out, if you take my business, if you take my whatever, I remain with faith. Because me, I'm a woman who has seen the flow so many times and managed to get back up so many times. Mm-hmm. And failure is when you stay down there for too long. Mm-hmm. By which for me, if you know me personally, you know that I do not have giving up in my dictionary. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't either. And guess what? One thing also by that lady, if you're an orphan, whether by default or just because your parents abandoned you mm-hmm. or people or your family abandoned you. I want you to know that you lay here on God's heart, on God's chest. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I'm here on God's heart. So same to you. Whatever you go through, always remember you're in his chest right here. If no one is there to listen to you, talk to him directly. You'll be so shocked as to what will happen when you put all your belief and courage in God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe you can follow Instagram. Yeah. You can tell them also what mm-hmm. makes you be business here because it's mm-hmm. your YouTube channel. Yeah, so across all social media handles, it's Yvonne Mikhail. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see a lot from there, you'll get to know more and a lot will resonate with you from there. Mm-hmm. YouTube channel, Yvonne Mikhail, Instagram, Yvonne Mikhail, Facebook. Even with Kali, but mostly active on YouTube and Instagram only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for having you, Yvonne. Mm-hmm. This is an inspiring, a very inspiring story, Thank a very you. beautiful story. Build up with a lot of faith. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like you know, you know what you go into, maybe they don't venture, they don't yeah. have faith at, yeah. at all. But your story has shown us how yeah. you had faith. Yeah. It has involved God mm. in all stages. It has, it has involved it God, has. and that was really awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Mm-hmm. If you are new here or if this is your first time mm-hmm. to come across this channel, can you subscribe to this channel? Give the videos a thumbs up and always remember to share this link with your friends. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was a Personal Diary with Bella Temere. Until next time, bye. Special mention to Nick Nak Interiors for fully sponsoring this video. Nick Nak Interiors is found in Mudangari Road and you can find them out on social media pages. And it's a shop that also you can get your antique furniture, decor, and lights.